Okay, hi everyone. Uh, this is my um, weak attempt to use the camera, so I apologize if it's not working that well. I also apologize. Apparently the people next door to my house are breaking their house down with a sledgehammer, so if you hear some pounding, that is what's going on, but hopefully it won't be too distracting. I wanted to just go over uh, a quick review of the open loop and closed loop control systems that we talked about last week because in reading over some of your lab assignments, um, I got the impression that there are some people who had a great handle on it and other people who weren't quite sure of what was going on. So I wanted to do a quick review so that we don't have to go over it in class and, and not waste time. but. Um, spend a lot of time doing that so I thought I would send this video so hopefully you can get a better idea and between that the lecture notes reading the book um, the labs and all those things hopefully you'll have a pretty good idea I really think and I don't know if you can see this or not hopefully you can um, the two key components and again I apologize if you can't see that but the two key components that we're looking at for open loop and closed loop systems are the time so is it done very fast or slow and the feedback. Do we get feedback only after we've completed it or can we get it during? And one of the things that I really wanted to highlight because I, I noticed that a couple of people in their labs were a little unsure. When we're talking for our purposes about closed loop and open loop control systems, we're talking about motor skills, actions, right? We gave the example in class of a stoplight right, being an open loop system is essentially is programmed, it does what it's asked to do. And we gave the example of a thermostat or central heating and air as a closed loop system that monitors what's going on all the time to make changes to reach an ideal state. I don't want that to be confusing for people and to start thinking of things as electronic systems or things like that. We're really about motor skills. So when I ask you if something is open loop or closed loop control system, I'm asking about the actual skill. So when you think about, and I'll give you some examples here, you think about is something open or closed loop, really think about the skill, the action that I'm doing, is that open or closed? And some skills we control through open loop, some we control through closed, and we can also switch. Right? So we might be closed in some cases, open in others, maybe we get better in activity and we change. Again, when we're looking at time, fast versus slow, things that are controlled through an open loop system are typically very fast. I clap my hands, right? It's a fast movement, okay, very quickly. I'm doing it quick, right? Things that are in closed loop control systems are very slow, slow movement. So hopefully you can see this. But if I were to, and I might not actually be able to do it, but you'll get the point. If I were to draw, a, try to draw a perfectly straight line across this page, that's a pretty slow movement, right? So you can see the difference. A slow movement as in closed loop versus the fast and open loop. And then there's a connection. So it's not just speed, although speed is a good way to kind of judge it. There's a connection between the time and then our use of feedback. And remember, this is a key point here, is our feedback. So in open loop systems, because the movement is so fast, we're only able to get feedback and use it after the movement is done. We can't get feedback and use it during. So here's an example again, as I clap, when I do this motion, I'm not getting feedback while I'm doing the clapping motion, I only get it after. So if I were to miss, right, I barely slapped my hands, I didn't have a chance to stop that while I was doing the motion. I waited, oh geez, I didn't do that right. Next time I gotta make sure my hands are placed in a better spot, right? I'm doing it so fast that I'm not having time to use feedback during. And, and what I mean by that is feedback during would be me starting the movement of clapping and saying, uh-oh, my hands don't look like they're lined up properly. I need to change their movement. Okay, that's perfect. Well, there you can see that's not really a clap because I didn't make any noise. So clapping is going to be an open loop control system because once I initiate the movement, I do it. I'm not checking myself in the middle of the movement to change based on how I'm doing, I just do it. Snapping would be the same thing. In a closed loop system, I'm able to get feedback during the movement. So once I've started the movement, I'm still able to get feedback to see if I'm doing it correctly because it's, it's a slower movement. So as an example, and again, I know that I'm not actually writing on this, but 
you guys can get the point. If I were trying to draw a perfectly straight line across here, I'm able to get feedback during the movement because it's a slow, continuous, long movement that I'm able to say, uh oh, I'm a little high, I need to move lower, or oh, I'm too low, I need to go up higher, right? So because closed loop systems, closed loop control is a slow and continuous movement, I'm able to monitor feedback and make changes. The example we gave in class, remember, is driving, right? As I'm driving my car, it's a slow, continuous movement in a sense, right? Driving my car, keeping it in the lanes. I'm able to monitor my feedback, right? Oh, I'm veering left, I need to come back right. I'm veering right, I need to come back left, right? Whereas things that we control in an open loop system, again, a clap, I just do it. This you know, might be a funny example, but you guys have all given somebody a high five before, right? And typically when we do a high five, we're using open loop control. Somebody puts their hand up, we put our hand up, bam, high five, right? Well, we whiff a lot, right? Or we miss, or you've given somebody a high five and you kind of laugh, ha ha, that's funny. Well, it's because we're controlling it in an open loop system that once we start the action, we just do it. We're not monitoring our hands the whole time saying, okay, are we in the right plane? Are we gonna, are we gonna hit? Oh, I need to move, right? Once we start, we go. So a key when we look at open and closed loop again is the time of the movement. Remember, we're talking movements and the feedback. So open loop control are, once we start them, they're very fast movements. And once I start them, I'm going to do it, right? I'm not going to change halfway. So I prepare myself. So let's use the clap as an example. In an open loop system, I prepare myself. Okay, I'm ready. My hands are in the right position. I feel like they're in the right spot. Once I start this movement, I'm not gonna make any adjustments. Go, right? It's done. The only feedback I can use is after. If I were to do that, I would say, oh, next time I need to move my hand a little bit this way, right? Closed loop systems are much slower and I have time during the movement to use feedback. So during this movement, I can say, okay, I'm a little too high. I need to move down. So I don't belabor the point. We'll quickly do what you did in class with the lab last week. So you had your coin, right? And you flick this coin and I hope you can see this. I flick that coin. I'm not doing a very good job under pressure. I flick that coin, that flick, that's the movement. We're asking, were you controlled an open loop or closed loop? This flick of that coin, when I flick that coin, is that open or closed? Well, let's look at it. that movement. That's pretty fast, right? And once I get myself in position and decide to make that movement, I'm not changing it, right? I'm not going to say halfway through, oh, my finger's here, I need to move it. So that's open loop. Once I get myself in position, Right? We're talking about stimulus, decision, and response. Once I get myself in position to do what I want to do, I'm going to do it with open loop. Right? Catching the coin, some of you used open and some used closed. Right? So it depends again on how quickly you did it. As this is spinning, some of you put your finger in position and just went for it. Right? You put your finger in position, you go for it. It's going to be open loop. Some of you were much more methodical, right? So let's pretend this coin is spinning. Some of you used a more closed loop system because you had your finger and you followed the coin around and you tried to slowly get closer and closer and you're monitoring your finger that whole time. Okay, am I right, am I right, am I right? And eventually you got down to it. And I think most people found that that was pretty difficult and open loop was much better. You, you figure out where to go, bam. But once you started that movement, you weren't going to stop. If we look at the card house quickly, because some people were, seem to be a little bit confused by this. When we ask if it's closed or open loop control, we're not asking is a card house itself open loop or closed loop. We're asking the motion, the actions that you did to make the card house, were they open or closed? Many of you put the card house together like this. You're very methodical and slow. You're monitoring your feedback. Okay, are my hands in the right spot? Are the cards in the right spot? Where do I put them? Okay, I think I've got them right. Good. So again, it's slow, and while you're doing the movement, you're monitoring yourself and using feedback. So that's more of a closed loop. If I did it on the table, again, I'm, I hope you can see this. Slowly, okay, am I in the right spot? Okay, got it, right? I don't think I have it, but we'll pretend, right? So that's more of a closed loop. I'm monitoring it slow. If you were to use open loop control for the cards, what you essentially would have done is said, OK, 
okay, I'm going to get, I think that's the right spot, and I would have dropped them, right? On the table, you would have said, all right, looks like they're in good position, drop, right? Most of you didn't do that, but that would be an example of an open loop. I get myself in position. Once I initiate the movement of letting the cards go, I'm doing it. There's no monitoring feedback. Most of you, though, use closed loop, very slow and methodical to try to get a measure, right? Quick uh, exercise example for you, right? So having somebody do a squat typically will be a closed loop control because they're gonna be going down very slowly. I'm not sure if you can see this, right? But somebody's gonna be going down very slowly in their squat, right? So they're monitoring themselves the whole time. They have the ability to make adjustments. Am I leaning too far forward? Am I too far back? Are my knees out over my toes? Whatever it might be, right? So that would be closed loop, right? Now, what if once they get down here, they're going to do a squat jump? Now, this might be an open loop. Once I've gotten down here, the jump is gonna be open because now I get myself in position, I'm ready to go, one, two, three, jump. Once I initiate that jump, I can't monitor feedback and change. Okay, so again, those are the keys when we're looking at open loop and closed loop. A good way to judge is by time. Is it fast, open loop, or slow, closed loop? And is the feedback only after? In other words, once I start the movement, I'm doing it. And I can only then make adjustments for the next time I do the movement, which would be open loop. Or closed loop, where the movement's slow enough that I can get my feedback during and make changes. Again, it's important to remember that we can use closed or open loop for a lot of different activities. Sometimes we might switch back and forth and success is not a determinant, right? So some of you last week were saying, well, I must have been open loop because I wasn't very good at monitoring my feedback. That doesn't matter. You don't have to be great at it. If I'm using closed loop, I don't have to be great at drawing a straight line. I'm still doing a closed loop control because I'm trying to use feedback during, I just might not be very good at it, right? So again, the time and the feedback, time and feedback are the key components. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking so that I don't bore you any more than I probably do in class. Anyway, hopefully that helped people understand a little bit more. If you've looked at this and you've read and you've looked over the notes and you still have questions, Please, please, please feel free to ask me because I want to make sure that you guys understand this stuff.